Referencing is something you'll hear about often when it comes to mixing or even instrumentation and making beats or songs. Maybe you already reference or you're looking at how others do it, or maybe you just want to start. Either way, you're in the right place. Today, I'll show you two ways that I reference in FL Studio and the other using Isotope's Ozone plugin. Let's get started. Please smash that like button and subscribe. So first things first that we're gonna do here is I am going to set up a mixer track for a reference track. So I'm gonna rename this reference, change the color, cause I can. That's going to be for our reference track. Oftentimes the issue is we're gonna have our reference track running into our master that the rest of our song is also running into which means when we started adding plugins on the master, it's going to affect our reference as well. The way we're gonna get around this is by creating what's called a submix. We're gonna rename this submix, change the color. Sure, that works. So now we have two slots where we can open up software to monitor and see what's going on. Span is free and great for this. It'll show you an EQ amongst other things. Uh, it also has correlation meters, so you can see phase and cool stuff like that. Wonderful plugin, I recommend having it. Now, before you get started and really start going, what I suggest you do, and you can save this as a preset for a project, is click Control, drag across a bunch of these mixer tracks, as many as you think you're generally gonna use. I'm going to scroll back over here. I'm going to right click at the bottom of our submix here. And I'm going to click route to this track only. And now if you'll see, every time I click one of these, they are now routed to that track only. I want you to be attentive that you click route to this track only and not just route to this track. If you click just route to this track, then it'll leave your master route here as well, which means that you just doubled the volume of anything going through that mixer track. And I would like to spare any and all of you, your ears, your headphones, and your speakers. So now that we're all linked to our submix here, we can have a reference track loaded. I'll load one. So I now have a reference track loaded. Next things next is our submix, which would be our song. And here is why we set this up like this, and I have all of these going, is what's gonna happen is if I go to contact, for example, here, it's linked to one because that's how it started with the project. But if I go to it and I click Control L, it's gonna send it to the next available track, as well as name it what just got sent there, which is perfect. Now we don't have to worry so hard about organization, because for the most part, we have it showing up organized. Now any piano I play is gonna go through this submix. So let's load up a few other things. So I've now loaded in two samples just for the demonstration. I don't even know if they're gonna sound good, good together. I'm gonna to control L, control L. I'm gonna mute the reference and play these. And hopefully they sound good. <laughs> If I'm listening to the beat and I want to check my reference, I'm going to right click my reference. Now here's the issue that we run into is when I right click my submix, it's only going to unmute my submix. If you'll notice, everything else is left muted. So I can't listen to the entire track at once and easily click between both, unless I hold the Alt button. So what Alt is gonna do is holding Alt is going to solo the entire family tree of that mixer channel. So anything else that is sent to it prior to it is also going to be unmuted. So now by holding the Alt button, we can easily switch between our reference and the beat.
And now we have a project that we can easily reference our reference and or our actual beat by simply doing one click on our mouse and holding the Alt key. If you go and save this into the program files of FL Studio, you can actually add it to one of these templates. As you'll see here, I have a few templates that I use for loading projects. And if you end up saving it to one of these, you can change it to be your default template if you want, so that every single time you load, you have mixer tracks all routed to one submix and a reference track for you to be able to reference your beat or reference your mix anytime you need to. And now instead of mastering on the master, you master on your submix. And so therefore your reference will be untouched for you to continue to reference accurately from. Next way to reference that I do is I load up an instance of Ozone. If you open Ozone up later in the tree, and I do this because generally I want it last, again, I don't want to put master effects over the reference, thus changing the reference. I'll open up Ozone. And if we go over here on the right, we have a section called Reference. We can simply add a reference. Now it's loading. We wait for it to get done loading. It's going to separate it into sections. We can choose whichever section we want to play. And when we play in FL Studio, it's also going to play here. Now all we do is we click this little on off button. And then we can click back and forth between our reference and the main track. And that's how we do it. And if you can't hear the references playing, it's because in post I decided to mute them so I don't get flagged for copyright. In summary, we can either set up a submix, which would now be our master for our instrumental. And then we could put that side by side with our reference, which will help us avoid running the reference through the master or any mix effects that are happening to the instrumental itself. Or we can load up an instance of Ozone from Isotope later on in the signal chain. And in there, we use their reference option to load a reference and use it alongside the song that we're making or mixing. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and Adios.